Um, right. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as relevant as I can. I'm known for having a bit of a ramble. I'm going to desperately try not to. The slideshow, actually, having seen his, I wish to God they weren't putting it on. Um, the slideshow is just a, a bunch of photographs, and it actually takes you from where I was born in a pretty, um, what is now a pretty dreadful area, but it wasn't when I was small, um, and to where I've actually arrived. Um, the CID were trying to get me yesterday, actually, to track me down because we were involved in a, a bit of a knife, a prevention of a knife attack a couple of nights ago. A young lady who, whose baby, um, she was actually being attacked. And we sort of weren't doing anything until the baby, until we saw the baby. And then we, uh, we got involved. So they're trying to, they're trying to touch, get in touch with me now. That's the sort of area I grew up in. Um, I've, 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 I've had a look at, uh, at what Deep asked us to talk about yesterday, and, and I had a look at what he said um, he wanted us to try and get across in our presentation. Just want to give you a, a little brief, um, little bit about, about me. Um, I'm, the, I'm the product of being raised um, from a one-parent family, working class. Why I'm a one-parent family, why I was a one-parent family, uh, it doesn't matter at the moment, because I'll get too emotional about it, so we won't talk about it. Um, and, oh, I think I'm, that's not, that's the, that's the house I was born in, it's dreadful isn't it, we've got a pile on in the back garden. Um, yeah, that's fine, I've got it now. Uh, as I say, product of a one parent family, grew up on a council estate, we're running through some houses that I've lived in, renovated, um, bought, I don't know where that's come from. Um, as I say, I, I, I grew up on a council estate, never had diddly squat, uh, bought my first house when I was 18, would you believe, and I couldn't get the deposit for it, and I eventually achieved the deposit after a visit to the Rainbow Casino, and that is another story, and that is true. I actually played blackjack to raise the deposit, because I couldn't quite get it, and I went for a night playing blackjack, and they never let me in there again. I needed £600, and I walked away with a 1000 I took 200 in with me, it was everything that I got in the world, but I, I, I managed to get the house. Um, I got that house and I, I learnt all my lessons on that little £6,000 to up to down terrace. Um, I bought and sold nine houses in between since, uh, since I was 18, over a period of 30 something years, and I'm not going to tell you exactly how many. Uh, but what I would do was I would find an area that I wanted to live in. I would find the grottiest house that I could afford. And I would go in and I would gut it and I would renovate it. And I have worked my socks off for 35 years. And at the end of 35 years, I accrued um, from, uh, coming from a little council house somewhere, I accrued £150,000 equity. And I thought, coming from where I'd come from, um, I've done pretty well. I worked it out this morning. I, I did a little bit of a calculation. That works out at £400 a month. It sort of doesn't seem so brilliant when you look at it like that. It doesn't have to 35 years. It doesn't look so good. But the fact of the matter was, I was working for um, £17 a week in a job, and my rent was nine quid. And I thought, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to actually buy something and get on. Um, so that's what I did, and that's what I learned about renovations, and I learned that you can make money, and I learned that you can move on, and you can go bigger, and you can go better. Um, I have a disabled cousin who, throughout those 30 years, I've managed them off. I've... I'm going to skip that. I've managed to keep her in a, in a house whilst maintaining my... Uh, my journey as well. My sister is quite severely disabled and I've managed to keep her too. Personally, I joined the TMA last year because my own medical problems meant that I wasn't uh, going to be able to stay in work anymore. I'll get this together in a sec. Um, but I still needed not to risk the future for those people that I looked after. The TMA enabled me to convert that £150,000 equity that I'd taken 30 years to make. 
I totted up this morning. In 12 months, forget that £150,000 that I made over 30 years, in 12 months, I've made £329,000 worth of equity. Yeah. I knew I'd got to leave my job and I didn't know I didn't know how the hell I was going to do it. I have equaled my salary in net rental. Um, so I've walked away. I've retired from my job. I've had enough. I'm in the process of um, buying my sister a property so she no longer has to rely on me to give it to her. She can have her own pride. She can have her, her own property. I'm buying one for her. My cousin, I'm downsizing her. She can have her own. I can give to people once now. I cannot feed them. I can show them how to maintain themselves. And that's important for me to be able to do that. Over and above that, I've, I'm called on. Oh, I've worked for women's groups, for disadvantaged children's groups. I've talked to, I've talked in schools, I've given talks about motivation, about self-respect, about self-esteem. If you want to know what a bad kid I was, I had the fastest expulsion rate in Birmingham. I got expelled from one school in three hours. <laughs> I went at 9.30, I was expelled at quarter past 12. I was a swine, but I was a troubled child. And I understand troubled children and, and what they're going through and why they do what they do. And, and I've, I've been asked if I will incorporate some wealth creation into my self-esteem discussion that I do with children. I'm hoping to work with another woman in this room who I, who I, I hold in great esteem, Maxine. She's an amazing woman who comes from a background that her achievement is mega given where she comes from, and I'm taking her along with me because she can teach so much. Um, I've got associations within TMA now that are, are just, that they're enormous. The friendships, the sharing, the generosity, uh, the things people will give to each other is just absolutely incredible. I intend to start a women's group, and I'm sorry guys if that seems as if I'm being a bit elitist, but I know as a female fraud officer out on the streets alone, having been held hostage twice, um, the sort of issues that women can face out there. You'll not be astonished to know that I was once held for four hours at knife point. After four hours, she couldn't stand it anymore and she let me go because I drove her mad. <laughs> she actually opened the door and said, leave. You should see how fast I can go down the stairs of a tower block. I tell you, go down about eight at the time. Um, basically, my work with CMA, for goodness sake, what's that done? There's a question on here. What would you advise people to do? What would you say about the CMA? 150,000 over 30 years, isn't that good? That's brilliant. That's, that's really good. But it's £400 a month. My acquisition in equity since I joined the TMI work, so this morning, it's nearly £3,000 a month that I've earned. I've walked away from a job that I've been trying to leave for the last five years and I didn't know how to go. And this TMA group opened the door for me and it said, there's your dream, go get it. I suggest if anybody's got a dream and you really want to follow it, this is something you should seriously think about. And you know, I wouldn't have cried if he hadn't started me off. <laughs> but once I start crying, I'm Irish and I can't stop. I just want to thank the team. I want to thank Hanif. I want to thank people who are prepared to work alongside me. I value the friendship enormously. What am I going to do for the future? I'm going to build. I'm going to grow. And I'm going to leave. I'm going to teach and I'm going to leave a legacy about how kids from the gossip can do it. <laughs>